Hey guys, welcome to Hair History of the Early Middle Ages. After the fall of the Roman Empire and the end of the Classical Era, we enter a period that we call the Dark Ages. And they are called that not because they were physically dark, but just because they are dark in the sense of history. You just don't know a lot about them. Most of the people were illiterate, secular paintings were forbidden. So all we have are very sporadic and mostly Christian images. So the beginning of the Middle Ages rang in an era of piety, poverty and religion. And all of these things caused a serious decline in the elaborateness of hairstyles. All throughout the Greek and Roman periods, women would wear all sorts of things. They would do anything they wished with their hair, anything they fancied. Wear it up or down, curl, uncurl, change their hairstyle several times a day, everything was allowed. But after the fall of the Roman Empire, the most popular style for women pretty much all throughout Europe was just to grow the hair out really long and wear it loose and natural, just however God gave it to you. The long loose hair would often be bound with a ribbon along the top or a band along the top of the head just to keep the hair in place and make sure it doesn't fall into um, your eyes, kind of like mine is doing now, should have worn a hairband. The fashion was definitely to part the hair down the center. But as you can imagine, Hair that is over knee length, just worn loose, is very impractical, especially in the Middle Ages where everybody had to work hard. Women just got tired of wearing their hair like that all the time and they started binding it with ribbons, like I did today. Let me just get up a little bit because my hair is long. It's not knee length. Yeah, this is kind of the way they would bind their hair with ribbons, although my ribbon is plastic so it makes for kind of more stiff braids. And they would wear their hair to the front like I'm wearing today. In later periods, the fashion shifted from this kind of bound hair towards uh, braided hair, so just two braids and then often bound with ribbons as well, or bows at the end. And as we progress later into the Middle Ages, women started to wear their braids up and wound around their heads in different ways, different fashions, and this kind of changed with the years, of course. In England, women would wear their hair with braids bound like this, but they would have even more hair just hanging loose at the back. Of course, the longer the better, that was just the mantra back then. And if you could not grow your own hair as long, you could always just get some hair pieces or wigs. And this was heavily frowned upon by the church. Wearing wigs and hair pieces was considered hiding from God, and that was considered a grave sin. It was even pronounced a mortal sin at some point in the Middle Ages. Although this did not scare the women away from wearing hair pieces and wigs, vanity is timeless. <laughs> so this was a popular style from the 9th century all the way through to the 13th century. And after that, this is something that would have mostly been worn by younger women, as married women were required to cover up their hair with some kind of headpiece. And from this time, it is a lot more difficult to say what their hair actually looked like underneath the headpieces because they would have always been worn. You know, the different scarves going under the chin and um, different hats and pointy stuff. <laughs> kind of the typical medieval headpieces. So as always, hair was still dyed, different ointments were used, uh, concoctions, the weirdest things, charcoal, um, dead leeches, fermented things, just nasty stuff was used to change the color of the hair. Beauty ideals vary of course, throughout different countries and different ages as well. But generally, we're starting to lean towards the uh, blonde beauty ideal. So many women would try to lighten their hair. And then women in the Germanic countries that actually had light hair would try to dye their hair red. We always want what we can't have. It's a universal thing. <laughs> and it was like that in the Middle Ages as well. So let's jump into the tutorial. Today I am wearing my super long hair extensions because of course my hair isn't long enough. So yes, I'm committing a mortal sin here, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So. What I'm going to do is part my hair down the center and then divide my hair into two pieces which I'm going to bring forward over my shoulders. And then I'm going to take one half of my hair, tie a ribbon around the top and just tie it in a double knot so that it stays. And then divide my ponytail into two sections and start wrapping the ribbon around it. And as you're wrapping your ribbon, the most important thing is to not twist the ribbon. So make sure to keep it with the flat side towards your hair at all times. And this will make for the most uh, pretty results. So I'm just going to keep wrapping it all the way down. And when I reach the end of my ribbon, I'm just going to tie it in a double knot again to, to secure the tail of my braid. 
And that is your early medieval hairstyle. So like I said, there just isn't that much known about this period. Next week we are going to go over the late Middle Ages, from which we have a little bit more imagery and the hairstyles were just a little bit more elaborate as well. So get ready for a lot of braiding. I want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye!